Boom, coming in hot, Chinch. What's up, man? Happy Friday to you, Happy brother. Happy Friday. You and me, we're like two professional jugglers, man. This morning, <laughs> this morning we were supposed to start it. Normally we start at like 8 Eastern, and I texted Sean at like 7. I'm like, God, I got something to do. All right, yeah, let's do 9.30. And then at, nine, yeah. at like 9.15, Case was like, hey, uh, can we do 10? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And then I texted him back, and I'm like, I just got into another meeting. Can we do 10.30? And, and here we are. We did it. We got here, though. <laughs> we made it, dude. We made it. We made like we always do. Like we always do. Like we always do. Hey, so oh my God, let's get right into it, man. The yeah. New York Yankees now have fifty strikeouts through two games against the Houston. Or thirty, Aspen. thirty strikeouts. Oh, thirty. Yeah. Oh wait, thirty. I'm sorry. Why did I say fifty? Because yeah. it feels like fifty. I said they're it before. coming in on. Yeah, they're on the verge of fifty. It could yeah, be after game three at fifty. I said before, it's like Valdez yeah. is a really good pitcher for the Astros, and he pitches ass off. But like, it was like he was facing yeah. nine nine Pedro Serranos last night. Nobody hit a breaking ball <laughs> the entire time. So what'd you take? They out just of this kept game? flipping breaking balls up there. Seven innings, nine huh. punches. Yeah, they they punched another thirteen. They punched out thirteen times last night. Seventeen in the first game. Like. It's just a bad recipe in the postseason because you're going to face great pitching. Like, you got to be able to string together hits and you got to be able to string together like big innings. Like, and you're just the home run, you're just not going to run. You know, they're, they're a home run hitting team, but you can't rely on that in the postseason to win you games. I think that's, a, mm-hmm. I think that's the, the, the big issue here. And, you know, you watch that lineup last night, you're like, man, if they're not on or they're not getting guys on base, you know, they're in trouble. Like you saw, I think it was in game one, like Rizzo hit a solo home run. That's great. But like yeah. at this point, you're going to beat the Astros. You got to get, you got to find a way. If you're going to win it on home runs, it better be a three run homer or two run homer. Yeah, like, they, had you know, one, you, they had one shot, one swing. Judge almost went up. Or was it Judge or Stan? I forgot. Uh, almost went up, caught at the wall, which would have been homer at Yankee Stadium, which again, when they leave that ballpark and they don't hit home runs, they're in ba- major trouble. Their lineup is not. Yeah. Built, it's not built for leaving Yankee Stadium. That's the way I look at it. No, no it's well, dude. That, that Yankee Stadium that helped. And as a player, when you start playing there every day, you're like, okay, I can get inside a ball, shoot it to right, it's a home run. Anywhere else, it's an out. You know, so it's definitely a, that's definitely a home field advantage. You know, for the Yankees. But I mean, you know, you just go back and look at that game. It just, you know, the, I think the big the big three run bomb by Bregman. Uh, there in the third was humongous for the Astros. I mean, Severino yeah. got a pitch, tried to get it in. I think it was two strikes, too. I want to say it was 0-2 or 1-2. Yeah. And, uh, man, he just dropped some bad head and crushed that yeah. ball. I mean, By the way, and I think we talked about it ahead. yesterday. Like, like, do not – like, Bregman is the scariest person in that lineup to me, just from an experience, cockiness, and ability standpoint. Like – He's, right. he's he's dangerous man he's a hell of a yeah oh, dude dude i love that there's there was a little clip on instagram i sent to uh i sent to uh my son jake the other day and they were asking bregman no bro bregman was was doing an, an interview at like a hot stove in the off season or something and he was like when i take the when i go up to the plate i think i'm the baddest dude out there like i'm, I'm looking to get somebody i don't care if i'm over for my last 20 like i'm i still feel like i'm a killer and you have to feel that way you know, in baseball, you have to feel that way in life, I think, too. But, like, yeah. you know, especially in this game of baseball, such a game of failure. I mean, you got to think, like, I'm the best hitter on the planet. And, and then you're right. When you see Bregman, whether he gets a hit or not, Chance, like you said, you feel like he's going to do something. And, you know, for him and Alvarez in the middle of that lineup, you know, they, they, they've they really been doing it this postseason. And, uh, you know, th- we knew the Houston's pitching is going to be there because it's been the best pitching in baseball all year long. And the bullpen in that rotation, they have so many guys. You know, they're just a, they just keep rolling guys in. Oh, he's nasty. He's nasty. Presley's been doing a great job at the end of the games. But you need your you need your stars to be stars. Yeah. In this, in this, in this, uh, in, in, in the postseason, and you're seeing that with the Astros so yeah. far. One more point about Bregman, and this is uh, short people like myself and him, and probably Pedroia says this too. This is like our motto: it's not the size of the dog in a fight; it's the size of the right. fight in a dog. Oh. Macy's barking. Today. Wow, good time. <laughs> good <laughs> job, Macy. Macy heard you. Macy heard you. <laughs> yeah, she's like, damn right. Anyway, <laughs> it's the truth, bro. That, that's why. That's why baseball is the greatest game in the world, dude. Because in the in the NBA, you you know, at the end of the day. You have to be a certain size, you know. I mean, you, yeah. you, you could also. There are smaller guys that can do it, but it's same thing in the NFL, right? It's this certain body type. Mm-hmm. In the in the MLB, it's whatever your strike zone is. So you don't have to be the biggest guy in the world. You can be an Altuve, a De Pedroia, and be some of the best players in baseball because you, uh, you know, a Bregman, these guys. But the bottom line is, dude, when I, when I was with Dustin Pedroia in Boston, we locked him next to each other. You know, when it, I think I told you this, but when you, t- when you yeah. thought he would take his shirt off, you thought this guy has to be jacked. He's <laughs> got to be something. Dude, 
he wasn't just a normal body average guy you know you would never know this guy was one of the best players in baseball but then you hear him talk and you're like this guy's a killer mm -hmm. he thinks he's six seven three hundred pounds like that's how powerful the mind is yeah you know how the, the the mind is so powerful you can take a guy that's really five seven you know i don't know a buck 60 buck 55 something like that and you could turn him into one of the best players in the game offensively and defensively because he thinks he is Yep. Because he actually thinks he is the best player, and he's he's gonna he's gonna rip your rip your head off no matter what. So I just love that, dude. I love that. I love that I love about that baseball. I baseball love that about is baseball a game. Too. Yeah. And and yeah. here I'm gonna take that to like a step further. That's totally like on this side. But that's why I let a guy play every day for like a month. Stop doing the platoon stuff because it's the same thing. It's like, hey, you're gonna go. What, how much confidence do you have when you go out there and say when, when your coach your your manager is like, listen. You're working on something. You're working on, you know, your back foot and whatever. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the results. I got your back. You're playing every game this month. Don't worry about the, the results. Just play hard. That's a big thing. And in the, it, like you said, the mental mental part of the game. I, I don't know. That's maybe dude. When, when I str when I struggled back in '98 and when I came up, I got had the eye injury. Like three days into, the, I just got traded from the Indians. Three days into the big leagues, I got hit in the eye. Dude, I thought my career was over. Like Dr. Kremchek comes in the, you know, you could tell it was dicey, you know, yeah. man, your career's probably going to be over. You got an orbital fracture, all this stuff. Right. So I come back, you know, I, I go, I hit a good night. My first night in Montreal against Javi Vasquez. Then I go over for 35 mm. and they're like, Hey man, we got to send you down. And I remember my eyes, not right. I'm just so frustrated. I'm 23 years old, 24. I'm like, man, is this it? Like, is, is this my run? Wow. Is, is, you know, all that hard work is, is it over? And you know, you start, questioning so many different things and i remember when they i went down to the minors and i hit well at AAA. and i remember i got called back up and you know at that point i was traded for dave burber their number one starter so mm -hmm. dude i know barry larkin and some of the, the vet, lenny harris some of the veteran guys are like who is this guy man yeah. he had he had first off he'd come up he's hurt he came back he stinks now we sent him down brought him back up like and I, I had that insecurity going like it was just such a tough time mentally jack mckeon the manager who's been been along been around a long time and and has had a lot of experience in the game calls me in his office one day he goes hey listen he goes you're gonna hit third every night meanwhile i'm like third i was like i'm terrible <laughs> you know i mean i can't wait he goes you're gonna hit third every night and play first base every night i don't care if you go oh for your next 200. he goes i don't care if you hit 150. he goes you're my guy you're gonna play you're gonna hit third wow. every night you're gonna be in the lineup bro I walked out of that office knowing he had my back because these guys are human beings. You think they're these Superman people. No, dude. I felt like Superman when I left yeah. that, that office though, because I knew one guy believed in me. One guy had my back one guy and he was the manager. Yes. Like it's incredible. So like, you know, even in life, like we got to know people have our backs. We got to know that people support us and that people, you know, uh, they'll go to the ends of the earth for us. So I look back at Jack McKeon, man, and I am so grateful that he was my manager because if that conversation doesn't happen, who knows where my career goes? Right. And I was great. And so when I got back in the lineup, Chinch, I was like, okay, I'm not coming out of the lineup if I go for four. I can, I can, you know, go a couple of games, but then, you know, I started getting some hits. And then I hit, end up hitting 300 in the second half, seven homers, respectable. I end up hitting 270 for the year, but I really believe it was all because of that conversation with Jack McKeon to give me the confidence and support I needed at a time where I was really down in the dumps, dude. It was yeah. just not an easy time, easy transition. So, wow. you know, for all the coaches out there, for all the players out there, teammates, you know, just dads, moms, all that stuff, what you say to your kids, what you say to your teammates, all that stuff, it matters. It really does. So, you know, choose your words carefully. I love that. Great point. Oh, yeah. I'm clipping that off. Yeah. What's going on on our social yeah. media pages? Let's go. Good, good rant. Let's right go. There. All right, hey, let's, <laughs> let's move on. Fun matchup, man. Padres, Phillies. It's it's almost like, oh, man, they're, they're two good series because you don't know who's yeah. really – I mean, I would give the Astros a major advantage over the Yankees, but Padres, Phillies right. is like, hmm. And you got Musgrove going tonight who's been great. Lights out. Yeah. Uh, but Phillies back 46,000 people, crazy – Philly fans who used to try to kill Santa Claus <laughs> will be their first championship series yeah. in, since 2010 for the Phillies. So they're going back home. Yeah. What, what's our take? Yeah, on? man. Dude, I, I, I agree with you, Chinch. It's so true. It's like you look at this series, you're like, I don't know. 
Right. Like I, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling seven games in this series because I got a feeling it's going to go back and forth. Obviously, going back to Philly too is that's a home field advantage, man. Uh, the Padres fans showed out though; they really did. They that did. was impressive yeah. to see what the Padres fans did. But the Phillies, man, playing in Philly, it's it, it's an intense crowd. It's 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 an, the energy is going to be off the charts, especially Friday night, you know, out there in Philly. Um, so, yeah, when I look at this series, it is different than the Astros Yankees series. I think the Yankees will win a couple games, mm. but I really do think the Astros will find a way to win that series. You know, I think yeah. that they're, and if they don't, they're the clear cut better best, team, I think. They're the best team probably out left, right? There's, they are the best team, no doubt about it. But, yeah, yeah. but when you look at this matchup, you're like, okay, man, this Phillies Padres matchup, it's up in the air. The pitching, their, their rotations line up, their bullpens line up, their lineups line up, you know, and, and there's a lot of star power. I, there's time. a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys in this series that you're like, man, I, these point. are the guys I really like. Juan Soto, I, I love watching his at bats. Mm-hmm. Manny Machado, I love mm-hmm. watching, you know, what he does. His at bats, you know, they're just, they're just so good. Then you go over, you got Bryce Harper on the other side, man, and th- a lot of those guys in that lineup. I mean, Schwarber, you don't know if he's going to hit the ball 500 feet. You know, it's right. it, it's so loud off his bat. Real Muto is, is fun to watch. I mean, there's just so many good players, yeah. you know, on, on both teams. Josh Hader is a freak of nature. Complete Josh freak Hader, of nature. Exactly. Yeah, this is you know, a fun yeah, one. yep, you know, yep, you love to see him too. You know what I also love? Like, I love seeing the guys who like during a regular season are usually like the eleven and 10, 12 and nine guys with pretty good ERA. Like, I'm thinking of like a guy like Musgrove who's had a good year in general. But like, I love right. seeing the threes and fours like turn into like ones and twos. Like, because everybody, every, literally every analyst, every fan. Is always like, oh, it's you know. Sometimes it matches up. It's like, oh, Verlander against this guy. Look at what Tyon the other night. Like Tyon pitched right. his his ass off the other night, and like, I love seeing the guys who aren't the number ones pitch like number ones in the postseason. That's what Musgrove's doing, and and that's what happened yeah. last night in the Astros game. That was as far as the greatest pitcher in the world. But damn, he looked, he looked yeah. like it last yeah. night. So yeah, well, Valdez has just that great Valdez. breaking ball. Seven, you know, he, he did win seventy games at under a three, so he had he has great yeah, stuff. I mean, that, that's what I mean. That's what's so funny, Chinch, about the Astros. We don't these guys aren't household names. Yeah, that's a good point. But when you go face the Astros, if you're a player, you go wow. Mm-hmm. You go out of a three game series in Houston, you face that staff. The way Dusty Baker works the bullpen, you're like, what just happened? Yeah, that that's some that's some fuel they got going on. No, so I like it. Yeah, it's it, it, but you're right, Musgrove too, brother. Like you know, he had a great first half of the year. He was leading the league in ERA. Kind of hit a little hiccup after he signed that four or five year deal for over a hundred million dollars, which is which is well worth it. And I think that'll end up being a deal for the Padres over the over the long term. On a side note too about Musgrove, bro. You know, we got the Miracle League of the South Hills here, where we yeah. have you know 350 special needs kids that we serve. When Musgrove was with the Pirates, he used to come out to our field. Oh. I got a chance to spend some time with him. Cool. Great dude. He looks like he looks like he might be like a serial killer out on the mountain he's got the beard yeah. you know he's got he's ready to go yeah. you're like man i don't want to me- i don't want to mess, mess with joe musgrove <laughs> but then when you meet joe musgrove man this guy's like a, this guy's a gentle giant he's such a nice guy he used to come out and with our kids so nice. you know i root i root for him because when you yeah. get to meet guys like that in that setting you know you start oh, absolutely to, start to root for him all right so we'll see what happens there uh crazy situation in the nfl last night first of all the game was crazy <laughs> two interceptions for touchdowns but i'm sitting there i was kind of off for the night and then all of a sudden my phone starts blowing up and i'm like what is this Chris McCaffrey gets traded to San Francisco for like 175,000 draft picks. And so, like, <laughs> it's a big story. And, I mean, look, just from a football standpoint, it's kind of interesting to see him and Debo Samuel together. But that's not even the big point to me. My point to you is having played. So, you were red when Ken Griffey, when in offseason, you, yeah. you, you find out that Ken Griffey Jr. is now a Cincinnati Red, one of the greatest players of all time. So I want right. to get your take on that. Like, what, what what you guys do as players when you get that, yeah. like, are they now, I'm sure they're texting each other, calling each other, holy cow, we got McCaffrey. That's on one side. The other side is, what is it like, and I think this has happened to you a couple times, when your good player gets traded away, and now yeah. you got to go in there going, oh, wow, we're we're sellers and like, what am I yeah. doing here for the next six months? So, oh boy, yeah. which one? Yeah, well, well. F- first off, going to, when Junior got traded to the Reds, bro, like he was Michael Jordan at the time in baseball. I mean, he had just come off 
a huge year, yeah. 50 plus home runs, I believe, in 1999. Mm -hmm. Just won the Derby out there in Fenway, mm -hmm. you know, at the All Star game. You know, th he was the best player on the planet. So as soon as as soon as Griff got traded to us, I would start calling everybody, yeah. Lark, and you know, I just call everyone I could call. You know, Dimitri, all these guys. Hey, 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 you know, can't believe, you know, we we got we got Junior. You know, he's literally, you know, greatest players of all time, especially at that time. So it, it's exciting. It's exciting when, you know, when you get a, when you get a premier frontline player, like Christian McCaffrey, like I said, with, with Griff, with that, having that, it is really, really exciting. And and I'm sure the San Francisco faithful are going to be fired up to have him, yeah. you know, out in that, in that, uh, you know, in that, in that lineup. And, and uh, it's just fun, man. It's awesome. It's yeah. incredible for, but it all, on the other side, I've been on many teams with like with the Reds and you know where where you're not good and at the deadline you start trading everybody away you're like that stinks because you're like you got to be kidding me like <laughs> we're just basically mailing it in to say we're not going to win so you're trading away your guys and that's a that's a and and the, and the one thing that hurts is not only are they great players you you know you guys all become so close and you you have that close knit group so you're you're you know you're really you're really bummed when, uh, you know, when guys get traded. Yeah. So here, I got another follow up to this. Talk about resiliency and, and never giving up and stuff like that. Nobody's really talking about this yet. So Jimmy Garoppolo has been, yeah. took, went to the Super Bowl as a quarterback for San yeah. Francisco. Right, right. What do they do? They go draft a quarterback in fields and then they freaking, they bench him. He was the backup starting. So now, now you've gone from being a Super Bowl quarterback. For the last two years, everybody's like, oh, you can't win with this guy. Meanwhile, you went to the Super Bowl with him. So now right. he starts his season, goes into training camp. Yeah, uh, the kid's going to start over you. Bam, now what? What's my career going to look like? All of a sudden, you're sitting there, and what do you do? you got to work hard in practice. you got to work hard and, and, yeah, and right. stay focused, whatever. Starter goes out. Boom, Jimmy G comes in. They've won a couple games, and now they have arguably the best combo wide receiver, running back, tight end. This side of, you know, the freaking right, Dallas Cowboys right. in, in in the 90s. So good for Jimmy G, man, because that guy's been battling Dude. his whole career. He, he started as a yeah. backup, played played really well uh, when with he, the Patriots. with the Patriots uh, after Brady that got him a contract, played his ass off until he got to a Super Bowl where everybody was yeah. saying, you can't win with him, you can't win with him. And then you try to bench him again. And now, yeah. now Dude, he's guy, got the keys guy. to the Porsche, though. Dude, this guy's a winner. I think the same thing. I'm like, okay, you can't get, you can't win with this guy. Right. He almost won the Super Bowl, and they went, you know, they they they've been going deep in the playoffs with with them, and all of a sudden, some guys are just winners. Yes. Some guys are just winners. Maybe it's not sexy, but at the end of the day, you're like, oh, we keep winning ball games, San Fran, but let's try and like, you know, let's let's try and bring in uh, the new young kid that's yeah. you know sexier. He runs better. He's got a cannon. Mm -hmm. No, Jimmy G wins games. Like it, it's unbelievable. And I think too, like, good for him, man. Good for him. I I go back like control the controllables right. at the end of the day like like jimmy g you're not going to be the starter but hey listen you know if you're if you're jimmy g the guy's a professional he's already been a backup to tom brady he know you know he his it's a prideful pride thing because all of a sudden you're like dude i've just taken you to the super bowl and stuff now you tell me i'm a backup but the guy's such a professional he he's still prepared he still showed up he still is a good teammate all of a sudden he gets that chance again they're like he's back in there and he's didn't miss a beat, bro. He's still putting up numbers, moving the football, winning ball games. You know, so you know when I look at that, I'm like, man, control the controllables. It, you know, yes. you can't decide whether you play or not, but you can decide the work you put in. You can decide, you know, the effort that you have. You can decide to bring a good mindset, to bring good energy every day. And I look at Jimmy G. I'm like, there's case in point. Do the job you're supposed to do. You're the backup. Be the best backup in the league so that when you get a shot to get in the ball game, bam, here we go. Jimmy G's in there. Oh, you didn't sulk in the corner and suck your thumb for, for a couple weeks, and all of a sudden you come in as a backup, and, and now you're not good either? No. They're paying mm -hmm. you a lot of money. Go do your job. Control what you can control, and go get it done. And that's why I look at that even in, as a, in a different way and say, dude, that's a pro for me. I that's love he's that. a professional professional person player awesome take awesome take wait i got one that just popped into my head on the flip side here's what you don't do okay the jets and giants okay are, are first time i think since 2010 they've both had winning records this late in the season jets are four and two they are they are as high riding as high as you possibly can okay right. yesterday elijah moore wide receiver has been playing much went in complained whatever and took the day off now it annoyed me because, like, maybe, you know, maybe he should be getting more. I, I don't care what the X's and O's are of that, but your team is 4-2. and two. That is not the day you go into the uh, the coach's office and say, 
I, I'm not playing enough. You guys got to play me more. Wait, hold on. We're four and two. You just, I cannot imagine how this guy should, like, I thought they should have cut him yesterday. And I'm not really a Jets fan, yeah. but like, like you can't, you can't be disgruntled when your team, like, of course you got to take things personally, but you got to, what do you call it? Like internalize and go, you know what? Now yeah. is not the time. I'll pick my spots. Let me keep working hard. But I'm not going to go like it, it was a big distraction. Nobody saw, nobody was talking about how great their running back is last night and how their quarterback's playing really well. They're talking about Elijah Moore doesn't like uh, that he's not getting a ball enough. Come on, dude. yeah. I don't know what's your team. Take on? Team, team first, man. Team mm-hmm. first. Team, team, team. You know, I remember in 2008, I, 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 I wasn't um, first round of playoffs. Mark Kotze was playing first base, and I felt like I should be playing. I'm like, man, I, I mm. really believe I should be playing in the postseason. And Kotze and I had a good conversation and whatever. But I was like, now's not the time for me to go to Terry Francona's office and bitch and moan that I'm not playing because at the end of the day, it's about the team. We're in the postseason. He has the reasons for what he's doing, what he's doing. I'm not looking to be a distraction right now. I will, you know, this isn't the time to do it. And, you know, I never went in there. And I, and I still to this day believe as a man, I did the right thing. Like, no, I, it's about the team. And this guy, you know, is one of the best managers to mm-hmm. ever, ever, uh, you know, be out there in the dugout. And so I got to just wear it. You know, so when I look at something like that with, with Elijah Moore, I'm like, hey, man, at the end of the day, you're four and two. You know, if things, if the shit starts hitting the fan at some point and you got to go into the, you know, into the office and say, hey, I want the ball more, this and that. Okay, I get it. Or if you just want to go in there and 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 plead your case yeah. or say, go what, back what, out to practice. What am I not doing? What can I do better? What, yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what's missing? There, what do hey, I need man, to work yeah, on? Yeah, listen, I feel like I can I can elevate the team to another level. You know, I want to be, I want my, want my number called more. Okay, that's totally different than saying you're going to take the day off because you didn't hear the answer you want to hear. Like, like, you know, for me, you know, if I'm if I'm the Jets, I really got to look at at uh, you know at that at, at the personnel. Like, hey, moving forward, is he a guy that we that we necessarily yeah. want to keep around? Because right now we're four and two, we're rolling for the first time in freaking eighty five years. It seems like <laughs> yeah. since Rex Ryan since Rex Ryan and Mark Sanchez Sanchez <laughs> were there, the right. AFC Championship game. Yeah. So yeah, for me, it's like, come on, team, team, team first. Hey, go a hey, man to man. If you had a problem, go in there and, and plead your case, but don't skip practice. Mm-mm. That's not a good look. No. All right. Well, we got all that. Okay. This weekend, we got a lot of football. You're not going to the St- no Steelers. Where are they? I don't think they're home anyway. What do we got this weekend? Steelers. Anything? Oh, uh, we got, we got, we got to take care of the family. Um, <laughs> yeah. I take care of my dad a lot, which is, which is good. I enjoy that. But, yeah. uh, we also have a Halloween party for our miracle league kids oh. tomorrow. At, uh, bro. It's so cool. They come oh. ripping out kids in their wheelchairs. One, uh, one kid, um, drew Grady back in the day came as a Zamboni. <laughs> Brilliant. So he, so he right. comes in his wheelchair. He's got a whole Zamboni, Penguin, so cool. Pittsburgh Penguins Zamboni. So all the kids are excited. I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, you Do know, you dress to be up? Able to, uh, oh, yeah, I dressed up. Yeah, one year I was Captain America. Uh, then, <laughs> Who are you going to be this then, year? Uh, I don't know. I was a cowboy last year. Mm. I, I got to figure something out. I got I to gotta get my act together. I don't know. what. Maybe send some things. What do you think I should be for Halloween? Oh, yeah. Let's ask, ask the fans. Wait, let me think. What, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I actually have to be a Clifford the Big Red Dog for my niece. <laughs> you serious? I, I'm pretty sure, actually. Like, with the, you know, like the almost like the hoodie pajamas thing and the ears. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Not, uh, are you like, is that like the, is that, are you doing that like with Jess at like a, a weird party in New York or is that for the kids? Is that for like the, <laughs> yeah, what do they call that? What is that? It's like, yeah. that's a freaky like, thing uh, people do. F- furry, furry, furry convention. I think, I think here in Pittsburgh, the furries are like big time. They're like the next oh, level. That's yeah, disgusting. I'm not kidding. I'm fur- I think the furry conventions here in Pittsburgh, I'm not kidding. That is one of the creepiest, <laughs> the creepiest things. Wait, that, that reminds me of a story and I can say this out loud. This is an unbelievable story. I think it was like her second or, or third year at the network, okay, and the winter meetings, I don't know if you were, I don't think you were at these winter meetings, I wasn't there, I was working from the studio, but at the exact same time that the winter meetings were taking place, there was yeah. a porno convention at the same <laughs> hotel that they were all staying in. Oh and no, so, in Vegas? I don't remember where it was, it could have been like a Texas, wherever it was, but yeah. this is the funniest thing, so, <laughs> so, so, uh, uh, John Heyman breaks some story, whatever, and this guy responds to him. And then Heyman responds back to the guy, like, thanks for the support, whatever. And the guy's like, anytime, Johnny, you're the best. We love you here. Maybe we'll get a drink at the bar. And he's like, okay. Now, this is kind of early days of Twitter, okay? So what he didn't see was an avatar that this guy had. The guy, First of all, the guy's name was Seymour Butts. 
Apparently, he's a famous like director <laughs> or producer. <laughs> His name is Seymour Seymour Butts. S E Y M or something Butts, and and his avatar was probably before you could. Uh, I, I can't even say. <laughs> <laughs> what the picture was in this guy's avatar. And so it went a little viral. And like, oh, John Heyman's going to hang out with Seymour Butts at a porn convention <laughs> no, this week no, at the Winter no, Meetings. The, the, la- the last person ever to hang out at a porn exactly. convention is yeah. John Heyman. Yeah, one of the most straight edge, <laughs> nicest guys. Great family, yeah. man. But he just oh didn't God, see so- it. Yeah, those, those before oh Twitter got God. funny. Anyway. So great. Yeah. Oh, so hey, great. oh, guess what I'm doing tomorrow? I'm going to Columbia. What, what you, what you Columbia Homecoming. Very oh, nice, funny story. Dude, nice. And I'm finally going to meet in person. Marnie Morningwig, former great coach, didn't even oh, realize yeah. his son is the QB coach for Columbia. And we realized that like oh. three weeks ago. And he's like, hey, I'm fl-. he lives in Montana, like in the mountains, oh. like literally like, at the, in, in a hole in the side of a mountain. It was, very, it was very hard to get him into the remote setting at the beginning, but awesome dude. And I'm really looking forward to meeting him. And, and oh, that's Jess cool. has never been up to Columbia, so she's coming. It'll be a fun, oh. fun day. That's going to be great, dude. Speaking yeah. of Columbia, I was thinking to you and telling you, remember I told you my buddy Mark Miller, his yeah. son Sam is is a uh, freshman at there at Columbia, and he just went up there this past weekend, said oh. he had a great time. Yeah. You know, I had like whatever the, you know, inner squad game or maybe they might have played mm-hmm. another team, but but he was saying that, you know, Sam's loving Columbia, you know, with the, with the you know, taking the subway yeah. in New York and everything like that, so yeah. pretty cool. cool. It must have been a different experience for you going to college in in Manhattan. Dude, totally different. Like not yeah. not like a frat, yeah. not a frat game thing. But dude, the greatest thing, oh my god, the greatest thing was like you would have these like mixers, like sorority and uh, fraternity, yeah. whatever, or the baseball team and uh, the whatever yeah. volleyball team. They would do these scavenger hunts that were also bar crawls. Great, oh dude. It was so cool. So you wind up on teams. So like they break it up like, and you know they, they pin a boy and a girl together. But like you have a team of like eight. And so there's like six teams of eight. This was the most fun thing I did in college, just from from like a party standpoint. <laughs> and you would start, you would get a clue. Everybody opens up their first clue, and your clues are not in the same bars. You're all going to kind of different bars. Everybody starts right. at a different bar. All up, right. and I'm talking from like the village all the way up to the Upper West Side, right? Yeah. And and the East Side, whatever. You get your first clue. You have to sit around and figure it out, and then figure out which bar it is. Then you all hop in cabs, whatever, or, or whatever, and get to the bar. When you get to the bar, you have you get you walk up to the bartender and be like, "Hey, we're here," and you have to say some code word, and they're like, "Okay," and they give you another card. You open that card, and somebody has to do something, meaning like you know, uh, a guy has to you know, a guy has to take his shirt off and dance on a bar for you guys to all get your 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 free drink and your free shot at that bar. And then once you accomplish that. They give you the clue, oh. and that clue takes you to the next bar or restaurant. And whoever gets to, whoever gets back to the very last bar at the end are the winners. Crazy, dude! It was a fun did you, thing. Did you win? Did you win? Oh no, dude! But listen to this. Oh my God, my. So wait, wait. This just uh, ran into my head. So one of these things, I was a sophomore. No, wait. I was a freshman, and I was close with a couple of the juniors. Like captain was a junior, and a senior invited me to one of these things. A senior girl, and, and it was game six of the World Series Yankees Braves. Okay. Oh my God. And I was like, I'm like, we can't go like with a, this. And me and my yeah. two friends were like, we can't, we can't go. We can't go. The Yankees could win the World Series for the first time in our lives that we remembered. Like, so we, we go to this thing, man. We ditched all the girls. We stayed at one bar because, <laughs> like, we're there when Girardi. Watch Girardi the game. The, you watched the game. Dude, yeah, we were trying to chase down every bar, and it wasn't like back in the day. We didn't have our cell phones. We couldn't be watching the game in the cab. So it'd be like, oh, man, I felt so bad. And, like, th- these girls probably hated us so much because we didn't even pay attention. <laughs> but that night, they win. Dude, the entire streets, Upper West Side, like 72nd Street to, like, 90th Street. Was a huge part. Marty The entire city. Was in the middle of the street. There was a dude had a huge like uh, a huge speaker, and he was playing the guitar out his window of one thing. The 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 bodegas and everything were just handing out beers to the whole city. <laughs> and then and then all of a sudden the uh, uh, the cops on the horses come, and we're all like, oh man, my like, god, oh, this is gonna be dangerous. Nope. All they did was just lie in the streets and just sit there to like protect everybody wow. and let everybody wow. party until like two o'clock in the morning That's in the awesome. middle That's of awesome. Broadway on Broadway. <laughs> Anyway. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that's so awesome. Wow, that came out of nowhere. That story, but really. yeah, dude, love it. The, the, going down the uh, memory lane in Columbia. Yeah. Let's go. Nice. All right. Well, have fun tomorrow, dude. We All need right. pictures. Make sure. It's, by the uh, way, folks, uh, try to try to uh, respond. 
Maybe you should do a tweet. Do a tweet. What should I wear to the mirror? Yeah, like, what should I wear for Halloween? Yeah, I'll do that. Well, yeah. for the Halloween party tomorrow. Yeah. All right, awesome. I'll do it. All right, All right Chinch. Love you, buddy. Hey, everyone out there, keep keep uh, subscribing, downloaded. All that good stuff, man. Yep. We, we, uh, we want to move it. the needle. Yes, move we do. Move the needle. All right, Chinch. Love you, man. I'll see you. Love have you, a great bro. weekend. Everybody out there, have a great weekend. Grateful for you, man. See you, buddy. See you, buddy.